Hello, everyone. Welcome to Everything Arsenal. We are back again with Cozy, just like we were yesterday. Um, how are you, Cozy? I'm great. I'm doing fine. Um, slow st transfer window start, but I like the, the the anticipation. We are building to the transfer window. So if anyone who is following, you know, um, something's gonna something is gonna happen. So I'm 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 excited. I'm still very 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 expectant of a good window. Absolutely. So on today's video, we are going to discuss the latest on Victor Yokoris. Could he be the answer for Arsenal? The latest on Aaron Ramsdale. If he does leave, which goalkeepers can we get? We're going to be talking about a couple of targets and a couple of goalkeepers we might want ourselves. Also, the latest on um, Joel Hato. And um, yeah, uh, basically the defense. How can we sort out the left side of the defense and all that? So we've already done a couple of videos with them. Cause make sure to click on um, his channel in the um, title of this video. Check out the video we did um, talking about strikers and Rashford and also earlier um, yesterday we did a video on everything Arsenal talking about Olise could it be the answer for 60 million is it um, no brainer for 60 million and also Joan Nevis could it be the best replacement for Thomas Party so you can check those ones out but for this one let's start with um, Yokores now Yokores had an incredible season because yeah. like in the league a lot of goals but in, in total 43 goals and 15 assists it's crazy that is 58 goal contributions in a season that that is absolutely crazy like if you had those kind of numbers in the championship and stuff where there's 46 games that would be great but you know the champion the the um portuguese uh premier league uh, fewer games and all that and then in the europa league they didn't really get five there if they got summer to like the final we'd have been looking at 60 65 60, goals from um e yeah. Yeah. and his numbers are very good. Now, recently we've had that here. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. A couple of journalists are reporting that we might get him. Others are reporting that now nah, that fee is too hefty. But from what I've seen from him, um, I did tell you a couple of weeks ago, it would be my second choice after Isaac. It look, it's looking like you're not going to get Isaac and your yeah. goals would be the one. So 43 goals and 15 assists. I know it's difficult to bring that back to the Premier League. It might be difficult, but he's already played for Coventry before. Do you think it could be the answer for us? And do you think we should be going all out? Because for me, I'm looking at it like if you have 150 million pounds to spend, I'd seriously consider dropping that 100 million on him, potentially getting a midfielder for 40 million and maybe even a wing on loan. That would be probably be my plan. I don't really want a defender myself, but if he becomes available, well and good. Do you think we should be going for him for 100 million if Isaac is not available? Well, I, I, I tell you, a hundred million sounds like very big money. Honestly, it is mm. very big money because um, it's a hundred million. But when you think about how much you're going to pay for players, you know, whether it be it's a uh, Michael Olise or be it a Mohamed Kudus, it's going to cost you around 60, 60, 65 million. So yeah. that is not far away from a hundred million. A hundred million is no longer the big respected figure that we all, you know, uh, used to fear i mean ask the broken it man united um you know have tried to break it before uh you know chelsea have broken it man city have broken it would i splash 100 million on victor yokares i would definitely go out there and splash the cash on your careers. Now, of course, we're going to talk about, um, you know, the, the scares of signing him one season in the Portuguese, Portuguese La Liga, then one season as well um, in the championship, probably. Yeah, th th there are some things to be concerned about. But if you're talking about prolific striker, if you're talking about the quality of a striker, Victor Yokar is, is the guy. He's just, you know, he's popped out of nowhere, right? He's popped out of nowhere. And I think he's just going to be, um, you know, th that amazing opportunity. Uh, you remember, I think it was Diego Costa w when Chelsea got Diego Costa. You know, he's another striker that literally came out, you know, out of nowhere, you know, you know, scoring a couple of goals at Atletico Madrid. Then he comes in Chelsea and boom, he starts, you know, scoring some good goals. So I, I would go in for Victor Yokares. I think Arsenal, and I'm, 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 I'm happy that we've been, you know, scouting him. I'm happy that we've been following him, according to Romano, because he's one of the strikers that if you're in the market for a striker, you've got to consider him, right? It's maybe the price. It's maybe, uh, like Eddie said, he's got 180 pages on players. So maybe in those 180 pages, there's a reason that Arsenal don't believe he's going to adapt to the Premier League, right? And maybe he's been in the Premier League at Brighton, and maybe they think he cannot fit in well for any reason. But you've got to consider him. You've got to look at him. For me, I would even rank him 
ahead of Alexander Isak in terms of what mm. Arsenal need specifically. Now, obviously, if you're going to sign one player, uh, you know, then Isak is the better fit because he can play on both, uh, you know, flanks and also as a centre forward. But with Victor Yokorez, he is your Arling Haaland. When Man City went out to send Arling Haaland, there were so many other players. There was, um, you know, there, was, there were so many players they could have got that could play across the, the, the line. They got a number nine that, um, according to Roy Keane, has got league to, uh, you know, football in his feet. And look at what the guy has done, um, you know, in the last five games for Man City, but then also, um, you know, last season. So for me, Victor Cruz mm -hmm. is a no-brainer. Anyone who wants a striker, Chelsea, Man United, Arsenal, Bayern, um, you know, re re Barcelona, Victor Ocares is a no-brainer. You've got to go and try, just fail, but don't fail to try on him. Yeah, uh, this the season that he had, um, I watched a few of his goals. I literally, the last couple of weeks, I've, I've, I've been like, you know what, I'm not just going to watch the goals. I'm going to try and find a couple of games, like the games he played against young boys in the Europa League. I'm like, I want to see a full game how it does, because it's not just about goals and assists, especially in this Arsenal team. You have to be able to do a lot of stuff. The one thing that he has, the ball striking ability. Like, there's people who just shoot the ball, but there's yeah. the ones that whip the ball. Like, I've seen Declan Rice from the free kicks and corners. He whips it, and you hear that, pff, like, he whips it, like, with so much power. He shots the goals he scored, very many different kind of goals. Pocha kind of goals, where it's a rebound, and then the defender's so, so close to clearing it, and then he just gets um, ahead of him and uh, pokes it in. Sometimes he runs in behind and scores it from outside the box, from inside the box. A couple of headers inside the box. So he does score a few um, goals, both right foot and left foot as well. Left foot, um, yeah. There's a few penalties as well they are like, like i think there's like 9 10 11 penalties in there i don't remember um, how many exactly there are i don't know if he's, he would be the penalty taker if we joined arsenal but a lot of very very uh, many different um styles of scoring and as you said I do looks at a lot of things at Arsenal. And I think this particular guy would probably fit. Um, 160 of those pages would be positives because yeah. of the way he plays. And it's not just goals. He also gets assist on top of that. And that's the way, that's probably one of the reasons that it still loves um, Jesus. He doesn't just score the goals. He also gets involved in the assists and the build up play in the you know combination play what's your relationship with Odega? What's your relationship with Saka? And I think that's, um, that's very, um, that's probably very um, good for us. But the worry would be two things, the money and would he be able to adapt? Now, he's played for Coventry before in the Championship, a very, very tough league. Now, personally yeah. for you, do you think you'd be able to adapt to the Premier League right away for us and score goals? For me, I'm starting to believe, yeah, why not? He can score goals. If he gets the chances, he can score goals. Well, well, the truth is that the Premier League is a very different animal when you compare it to uh, the other leagues. And yes, I know um, it's a bit of uh, a first shot when we go out there and Premier League teams are competing in Europe. Um, they're kind of bullied and, and, and humiliated and all that. But the, the, we've got to say it. The Premier League has got a lot of intensity, a lot of entertainment and a lot of physicality. And that's why mm -hmm. we love it. That's why we we choose to pay hundreds of, of, of thousands of, 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 of money in our currencies every single season to actually watch it. So can he, can, can he adapt? I think he's got what it needs to adapt to the Premier League. Well, if I compare him to a player like Erling Haaland, Haaland doesn't really score many goals uh, on the header. So, is, so does Victor Jokares. Mm -hmm. So in terms of pace, he's got the pace. In terms of his hold-up play, I, I think he's better than Erling Haaland in terms of his hold-up play, right? And, and I've seen uh, Haaland at Dortmund, and I've seen Haaland at Man City. I can tell you Haaland is a much better spinner. He, he, he would rather, you know, put that ball into, into, into space for him to run onto than uh, him, you know, getting it and probably spinning with it uh, or bringing other players into play. So Jokaris is a much better player there. Physicality, he is physical. He is absolutely very, very physical. You're not going to bully him. And mm -hmm. again, it's one of the things why, why Michalata brought in Kai Havers. You want a center forward. You want a, a forward player that can, you know, hold up the ball and you're sure he's going to retain it. Hence the goal we scored against Man City in the first leg um, of, the, of the Premier League. So for me, when you look at his attributes, physicality, he takes that. Pess. Mm -hmm. The Premier League is pessy um, at times, especially in, in games that are a little bit open. Of course, Arsenal dominate a lot of games, so we might not be able to use his blistering pace. But at mm -hmm. Sporting Lisbon, they're not the best team in the uh, you know in, in Portugal. So at times, mm -hmm. they, you know, so many times they've, they've been pinned in and they have used his um, you know pace you know, to run in behind. So he's got blistering pace. 
um, if we are going to, we, we have one of the best goalkeepers at finding runners uh, after collecting crosses and David Dreyer. So pace, physicality, finishing. A again, mm. um, I would say the Premier League still has one of some of the uh, world's best goalkeepers. So mm -hmm. your finishing has got to be good. Um, and I know we've missed some good, you know, good chances due to brilliant serves like Emi Martinez, Trossard, you know, such, such instances. So for me, he would adapt. He would adapt really well. Would he adapt quickly? Maybe there's a question there because um, you look at this Arsenal team, the system we play, you've got to adapt yeah. to the system first. Before you, you think about adapting into the Premier League, you've got to adapt to Mikel Arteta's demands first. And mm -hmm. Kai Havers being a presser, he adapted quickly because in his game, his game is built about built around you know pressing, you know pressing, uh, the mm -hmm. same as Martin Odegaard, um, and, and that's what the, 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 that's the best they do. With Jokares, I've not seen him as a big presser. But probably yeah. that could be coached into him uh, as a centre forward. You're leading the line. Uh, you're our first defender. You you you, mm -hmm. you are first avenue to you know bring the ball back uh, when we are not in position. You know um, free kicks from offsides and then you know goal kicks. You should be the guy that we trust to go and close down. You know players maybe uh, link. You know direct them into their weak weakest link so that we can press them and get the ball uh, away from them and things like that. But I think he would adapt. Maybe like 18 goals in the first season um, at a club like Arsenal or Man City that creates a lot. Uh, That's just the league or all competitions? All competitions. Yeah, yeah in all competitions. I, th I would say 18 uh, in, a club that, in a club that creates a lot because both of them, City and Arsenal, have very complicated systems. So when you think mm. about the Arsenal system right now, you're going to ask yourself, how many times have we really seen a player, you know, thread the ball through for a run at run on to like 1v1. Actually, mm -hmm. that happens more when Gabriel Martin is on the pitch. On the left hand side, um, I think he's got two like those against Crystal Palace, missed yeah. one against Chelsea. I think he missed another one, another against, 1v1, against, I think. Against Wolves. Uh, I exactly, I think it was. So you can see that it is very, very intentional what Arsenal do. And you have to mm -hmm. get the, the roadmap in your head, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when Martin is on the pitch, we have three ball, through balls. When Martin is, on, is, is not on the pitch, you don't see the through balls. You, you know, we, we are scoring different kind of goals. Uh, we're using Ben White. We are pinning ourselves on the left-hand side um, and doing all that kind of stuff. So, can he adapt? Oh, that's that also because teams play deep against us. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, de definitely. That's a, mm -hmm. that, that's another that, that's another reason. So can 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 he get into Mikel Arteta's system? I think that would take him some time. I think that would take any player some time to um, you know go away from I'm just the number nine and this is what I do to this is how we do it at Arsenal and therefore this is what this is my new job description. But the moment he he learns what the job duties are. Um, at Arsenal, he would definitely thrive in the Premier League. I hear you. Now, uh, for me, what I've seen, uh, the, the finishing, as you've said, absolutely incredible. And the way he strikes the ball, that's what is fascinating about him. Even the penalties he takes, even if a mm. goalkeeper jumps, uh, dives the right way, you cannot save that because it's just gone right away. He hits it with so much power, which is great. Uh, and from com um, watching his goals at Coventry and his goals at um, Sporting, you can tell he's improved. Like, he's the way, he, you know, more... Um, What's the word? He's more like, like he's like more of a killer now. Like you know, yeah, he gets yeah. that chance. Like he more, he more more of a killer um, over at Sporting, and it's just one season. But that goal, those goal returns, forty three goals and fifteen assists, is not yeah. um, easy to do. Even if it's a lucky season, that that's not something easy to do. Now the only question is. 100 million release clause. Do you think it's worth it? One hundred and one million, actually. Do you think it's worth it, or do you think there's a way you can negotiate it? I think it will be negotiated down. I think it will be mm. negotiated down. Is it worth it? Um, I, I still have a lot of respect for 100 million. I still have a lot of respect for um, 80, 90 you know, million. But mm -hmm. I think you're not going to get him below 80. Mm -hmm. You can negotiate a deal between 80 to 85. I think uh, something we saw with uh, Darwin Nunes and Liverpool. They wanted 100 million Benfica, but then Liverpool uh, negotiated their way around it. And mm -hmm. uh, in the end, they had to pay around 80 to 85. So I think yeah. you can negotiate it to between 80 to 85. 100 would be extreme. That would be very poor negotiation. Mm. Now, 
I, I know we're going to talk about some of the um, some of the weaknesses and some of the threats, uh, you know, that comes with this come with this deal. But why I wouldn't pay a hundred million on him is, mm -hmm. I think there's already a lot of pressure on this guy just to replicate what he has done in his past two seasons. If he missed to, moves to a bigger league, that is something else. He moves moves to a bigger club. That is something else. So he, he wants to replicate what he has done. He's moved to a, a new a new environment, a new league, a new city, a new club, a new environment, and then he's got a price tag that is like a hundred million. That would be a little bit um, for me over you know overpaying for him, and that would actually disrupt him. You know, with players like Declan Rice, mm -hmm. Declan Rice, when you hear his interviews and when you listen him to, listen to him. You know he believes he is a top player. You know he, he already believes that he's a top guy, right? And, and and he talks about you know winning. He talks about Champions League. He talks about levels that he deserves to be at. And he talks about dreams. And uh, he knows that he's he, he's um the heartbeat of England mm -hmm. in midfield. So because it's the heartbeat of England in midfield, and anyone expects uh, England to win the Euros, definitely can play for Man City. Definitely can play for yeah. Arsenal because. The job description and the responsibilities that come with that role is that you are supposed to be winners. This bunch of, uh, you know, this group is supposed to be uh, winners. I think mm -hmm. with Jokeres, he's 25. Strikers are priming these days at around 27 there, 28. Um, it's, it's where we've seen strikers prime, uh, you know. The likes of Watkins, the likes of uh, you know Benzema, they, they've done a lot mm -hmm. of work at, at 28 plus. So I think. He's one is gonna be one of those strikers that really give us a lot of quality at 27 plus, but hundred would be a little bit an overpay. It would be yeah. a little bit an overpay. I can't lie. You cannot tell me that this guy costs the same as Declan Rice. Like Rice has had <laughs> eight seasons on, uh, on, on in the Premier League at the top, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't truly really pay a hundred million for him. It's a crazy market, but I would say 80 to 85 million, and then you nurture him into the striker you want him to be. Yeah, um, I think if it was 7 75, I think that would be a no brainer. I would go straight for yeah, him no right brainer. without no investing brainer. him at time because that age 25 is now starting to like head into his prime. He's already been, you know, he's already played as a striker for a lot of years now five, six, seven years. So he's gotten used to that spot and he just wants to score goals, which is incredible. So let us know in the comment section would you take your craze because the exact deal is looking very impossible. So would, would your craze be a second arm choice? And um, do you think he'd be convinced to move from Sporting to Arsenal if the deal was done? Do you think he'd be like, yes, I'm going to Arsenal? I, I, I think he's um I think he's he's waiting for a move. I, I think he's waiting for a move because the season that he has had, he would be a fool for him to to waste another one year or two years uh, at Sporting. Now, if he was twenty three, I would back him to stay. Twenty four, I would back him to stay. But when you're twenty five, that is when one you make the money as um mm -hmm. as a footballer. That's when you get the hundred k contract or one hundred and fifty k contract at the moment. You know during that age. Secondly. You want to get to prime at a club where you have settled. And one of the things that have helped um, you know, players like Kevin De Bruyne, look at him and look at the time he spent at Man City, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, if, 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 you, if you are in a right project, in the right system, with the right players around and the right manager, and you are 25, you're sure... By 27, you're going to be hitting those numbers unless you suffer injuries or you you fall up with you fall out with the manager. But you, you want to prime at a perfect pro, you know project in a very very good project. So I don't think it's going to start sporting. I think Chelsea will 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 go in. I think Moresca will, will try to do something with them. I wouldn't be surprised with the PSG. They always pick up on some someone. Um, mm. I wouldn't be surprised. I, and and I think at the moment he's not that striker that has. Um, you know, a preference like Osimhen. Yeah. He wants the Premier League. Doesn't want to go back to France. Doesn't want to Saudi Arabia. You know, Yokares is one of the strikers that I'm looking at. I'm like, he can even end up in Saudi. He can even end up yeah. in, in in the Saudi Arabia. If someone comes in with a hundred million, and then he's offered three hundred thousand, I won't be surprised to see him going to Saudi Arabia. So I, I don't oh, think he stayed yeah. at Sporting Lisbon. I really, really yeah, it's a, it's kind of um, you know, it's it's kind of a bad take. But yeah. we have seen these deals happen, you know, Pato, Oscar yeah. to China. They, they have happened, and you're like, 
really Oscar to China? Yeah, but and it's but been... after playing in the Premier League, though, I feel like after you've played in the Premier League, then you can you can go on and play there. But yeah. obviously for players like Sesko, we are going to see them at the Euros. But unfortunately, Zach and Yoko is not going to see them because Sweden is not at the Euros. But let us know in the comment section what you guys make of Yoko is potentially coming to Arsenal. Would you pay that 100 million or not? Next up, let's talk about another player that you know might struggle in England. He's done well in Netherlands. He's still young, and that is Jarrell had to a defender now for me i've made my um thoughts clear uh my opinions clear i feel like all our seven defenders are good to go uh that is saliba gabriel kivio ben white tommy asu team and zinchenko i'm absolutely okay with that um if everyone stays fit we are good to go but i've always said if a very good defender generational defender pops up I have no much, uh, um, problem with, you know, buying him and, you know, keeping them for the future, potentially sending them on loan like we did with Saliba a couple of times and then they come back. I have no problem with that. 40 million, 45 million, if a defender becomes available, you can get them because, you know, in terms of spending money, man, still have a lot of defenders that they spent money on, you know. Um, AK was like 41 million. Um, Stones was like 50 million. 50 million Vardy yeah. was 70, 80 million. Like 80 all the million. center backs. I don't remember how much Diaz was bought for, but all of I think them, around, 50, well, uh, around 50 plus. So those are a lot of expensive defenders. Never really yeah. spent too much money on defenders in terms of centre-backs. I mean, Ben went to sign for 50 million, but Gabriel was cheaper, Saliba was cheap and all that. So Joel Hart has been linked to Arsenal. Um, he's only 18 years of age. He's had a very good season at um, at Ajax. So he only started playing January of um, last year, 2023. So he hasn't been playing for the first team for too long. Um, he obviously, after uh, before that, he was playing for the academy. And then after that, he was playing, uh, he played, 2022 23 season half of it for Ajax and then this season he's played um 33 games in the league and 46 games overall um in all competitions so those are very good numbers for a very young defender an 18 year old but do you think that is where you're supposed to be spending our money on and what do you make of him well personally as a you know as a player individually if i'm to assess him he's an is a sensational talent that is the one sensational talent like when i think about saliba and i think about bastoni those are the next generation of defenders maybe araujo at um at barcelona that is the yeah. next generation of defenders now add jorahato he is mm -hmm. unbelievably good he is a mm -hmm. joke of you know at that age for him to be uh you know the savior at at ix it's mm -hmm. un unbelievable. And and with Ajax, they've had this um, you know, transition from Julian Timber, who's going to Arsenal, then Lisandro Martinez, who has gone to Manchester United. They didn't replace them very well. So they needed one player, either from the academy or either from uh, elsewhere, to come and step up. And it's been an 18-year-old Gerard Hartzell who's actually stepped up. So for me, his talent is unbelievable. Uh, we, we, this year... And this season, we have been exposed to so many unbelievable talents. Like there is yeah. Lenioro um, in France. He's been absolutely exquisite. We have the new, uh, I think he's called, you know, Cassie at Barcelona. The, the young centre-back has been, you know, sensational as well. Kubasi. Gerard Hacho. Yeah, he's, he's called what? Kubasi. Kubasi. Yeah, Kubasi. Yeah. I would rate Gerard Hacho over all those guys. Like for me... I cannot, I cannot really find the right words to explain uh, to anyone who has not either gone and seen the clips of this guy, um, you know. But one thing you've got to know is you're looking at the perfect centre back in the making. He's a very, very composed player on the ball, very composed of the ball. He's got the pace. You cannot pull him, and it's not actually, he's not actually very huge, but you just can't pull him. So he's got the ingredients of a Julian Timber uh, in terms of intelligence and you know, calmness in possession. And then yeah. Alessandro Martinez in terms of being ruthless, you know, quick and a very, very quick decision maker. He will put it, the, put the ball out. He will easily, uh, you know, make the right decision in the right time. Now, I, it, I, it explains why Michelata is big on him. There are not so many times when Arsenal know that the player has signed a new deal and then mm -hmm. a, a big, you know, a big outlet like Romano comes out and said, he signed a new deal but Arsenal are still trying to sign him. That means that they really believe uh, in his talent. And I really do believe in his talent. I think I would break the bank. And breaking the bank maybe, or, or, you know, on a player like Hato means like 25 to 45, around there in that range. If mm -hmm. it's in that range, I would break the bank for Jorah Hato. He's a sensational footballer. Absolutely okay. sensational. 
Now, of course, he's not the only person who rates him highly. Actually, um, the score 90 under 18 team of the year has come out, and Hart yeah. has been included at left back. So that's how highly he's, um, he is regarded. He can play at left back, and he can also play at center back, and he's a guy who would help the likes of Gabriel and those kind of players. And in his first four months as a football at Ajax, he was included in the May 2023 um, team of the month, and the first month of um, this past season in August of 2023 was also included in the team of the month. So you can see his qualities are there. Um, his qualities are there. Um, ball carrying abilities there, and that's exactly what yeah. you need for our defenders back in the day we didn't really care about defenders who play football just needed you know a soul campbell just clear the ball hit people around tony adam just smash people around i know they had a bit yeah. of technicality yeah. here and here color Turi could take a free kick and stuff i know that but um the defenders back then you just need them to just clear the ball put your put your um, body on the line and all that but these days the defender you need the ball carrying ability the technical ability even at that age you need the maturity as well because that's a very yeah. important position especially for us all those clean sheets we've kept we've really also depended on our, on our um our defense those clean sheets against yeah. man city those uh, that clean shit against United at Old Trafford. That's really our defense doing the job for us and also a defensive midfielder. So um because uh, you said 30, 40 million, um, fair enough. Uh, there's other good points that you made. Um, I think on one of your videos, you said um, you, you show, you'll be happy with him going out on loan and coming back, signing him and uh, getting back on um from the loan deal, loan spell. I mean, Saliba went out on loan for th three different teams. To yeah. Marseille, to Nice, and to Saint Etienne, and then we brought him back after three years as almost a complete package, and then just had to trick a few things, and he became up absolutely um like remarkable, impossible to um get past. So, do, would you want to see the same thing right now with Hart, or do you think you know? Listen, come here right now. Gabriel can be rotated a few games, rest him, play Hart. So you have the options of Gabriel, Hart, or so and all those guys, or do you feel like? We already have Kivio. We can do the same thing: left centre back, left back. Give her to a loan deal, and let's keep the defenders that we have. Well, if if we were under a manager like um, Pep Guardiola or um, Klopp, I would say bring him right now. Let him start nurturing him. The, my, my problem with Mikel, and obviously <laughs> he's my guy, mm -hmm. but my problem with Mikel is that he will fail to give players. Uh, the time they deserve and it is something that he's got to work on as a manager we know he's not perfect we know that he's the, this is his first uh, full managerial job mm -hmm. so because it's Mikel Arteta because I know Mikel will not give him the time when Timber, White, Gabriel and Saliba are fit I would say sign him and leave him at Ajax for one more season until he's 19 and then mm -hmm. we see how he develops if he if, you know if he needs another season uh, out on loan you could actually, you know, uh, leave him out on loan as well, maybe for 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 one year, or, you know, or even two years. So, if Mikelate is sure, he's going to come in and he's going to play the football and he's going to get the minutes. I'm not talking about starting every game. I'm talking mm -hmm. about, you know, getting integrated. You know, sharing minutes with Tima, sharing minutes with Zichenko, sharing minutes with Jakub Kivio. If that could happen. Of course, it's very difficult under Arsenal, under Arsenal's Mikel Arteta. But if that was to happen, I would definitely want to see him play for Arsenal. I would definitely, you know, bring him in. Because, you know, what, with, with players like Jorah Hato, what you have is you're having almost an unbeatable second eleven yeah. of players that you cannot even recognize. Like, you know, this Manchester City second eleven of, you know, Rick on Lewis and, uh, you know, uh, Bob and... and that team, it, you know, will beat will, will beat Luton. It will beat uh, Crystal Palace at home. Mm. It will beat all these teams. I think that is why I would want him to come because he's more quality than Kivio. He's more quality than um, Alexander Zichenko in terms of uh, defensive abilities. So, uh, yeah. like, he's 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 a, you know he's a young player, but then he's in 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 his way he's an upgrade. I think it's, it's the same thing uh, we, we 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 talked about Joao Neves yesterday. That mm -hmm. with him, he's young, so you have his, you know, you have your own concerns about him. But then when he comes in, he brings the quality. We know he's, yeah. you know, he's got the quality. So I think Jura Hato, if, if Mikelate is sure that he's going to get some minutes, rotate those, you know, rotate those you know, defenders. I think we have around eight or nine and above. Then it's okay, you can bring him in. But I think a loan deal will be the much better option. Um, and also in terms of you know negotiations, Ajax would prefer a team that would maybe sign him and leave mm -hmm. him there for a, a, you know an extra year.
I love that. And the thing I've, I've always um, said as well, signing players from Man City, Ajax, Brighton, I feel like they don't have too much to adapt because they play like, you know, yeah. playing from the back, like Brighton and Man City in terms of keeping position. So they don't really need a lot to adapt in terms of that. But let us know, would you be going for a defender like Jarrell Hart or do you think that's not really a priority? Personally, I don't think it's a priority, but if uh, a good defender becomes available, I have two in mind, uh, three in mind actually, that is Hato, Branthwaite and also Kadiogli. If a very good defender comes um, comes up, you can take them absolutely no yeah. problem. Now, I, I, yeah, and yeah. I, also th- I, I also think that if if you are if you're looking at opportunities on the market opportunities that just don't come easily yeah. you you've got um Jora Hatso, you've got Diamonde at Sporting and you've got Joao Neves like those three are players that you you anyone is just going to pick them up because they know it's generational talent you pick him yeah. up right now or you don't pick him up forever it's as simple as that like we've not seen another edin hazard in a very long time ever since mm-hmm. jesse picked him up at lille you know done dusted goodbye as simple as that true now another position we might need to bring someone young is um our goalkeeper position our second choice goalkeeper position now before that let's start with aaron ramsdale now on yesterday's video with Cozy, we talked about Ramsdale and how much you should be getting for him and if he should stay or not. Uh, make sure to check that one out. But um, today we've had news that uh, Newcastle are going for Trafford because they should cost them like 20 million or something. And they feel like the price of 30 million for Ramsdale is quite steep, quite high. So, Cozy, what would you be willing to do? Would you like be out? Uh, like, yeah, you're not leaving until anyone gives us 30 million. Or would you be like, whatever, just go for it? 18 million or would you be like no you have to stay until someone brings that um fee would you be strict with that i i, I think with the ramsdale situation the media has done us a lot of dirty they've really mm. done a dirty job you know in in, in our regard they mm. have painted arsenal as reckless they're painted ramsdale as surplus requirement and they have painted him as not good enough and they have um you know certainly uh, given a lot of, you know, they, they've given a lot of unnecessary discredit to, mm-hmm. to, to to Aaron Ramsdale. And there's so many Arsenal fans as well that, that talk about it on their live streams and I'm watching and I'm like, you know, people telling me, you know, Aaron Ramsdale, look at this game, look at this mistake. And I'm like, every goalkeeper has had their own, you know, mistakes. Every goalkeeper has had their, you know, part of mistakes, in, you know, in, in the previous season. We just don't talk yeah. about them. Raya has had his uh, own share of them. So the pricing of Aaron Ramsdale is not going to go up right now because this season he's played the two Brentford games, right? And he started mm-hmm. the season in goal. Are we really going to see him start the season in goal next season? No. Is he going no. to play against Brentford? Um, no. I don't even know whether no. David Ray is going to go back to Brentford because it doesn't make any sense. Why would he go back, right? Um, mm-hmm. Arsenal should just make the deal and, 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 and it happens. So if you keep him for one more season... If they've been, if Newcastle is willing to offer 25 million euros right now, they'll give you 18 or less than 18 next summer. So Arsenal's mm-hmm. hands are tied here. We are going to go into a negotiation room, no, room knowing that we are not setting the price anymore. Yes, we, we can set the price, but we know that the clubs we're dealing with are not willing to listen to us. Why would they listen to us? We've, you know, after all, the media have portrayed Ramsdale as surplus requirements, and therefore they're coming to you know to pick up someone Arsenal is not really interested in, right? Someone mm-hmm. who would rather see his contract run down rather than see him on the pitch again. So I think because we because of the circumstances, twenty five to twenty nine million. If if I'm going to go below thirty, twenty five to twenty five to, to, to twenty five to twenty nine million euros. You go for yeah. that. There is nothing to do, right? Uh, but for me, he's still a 30 million goalkeeper and above. I I agree. I agree. So let us see what happens with that. But in my mind, ultimately, I feel like he's going to leave. So we are going to have to mm. um, get a couple of other, uh, maybe another goalkeeper. Now, we have goalkeepers, but we know Carl Hein would not do the job. We know um, Okonko was voted goalkeeper of the year in uh, league two so uh, Trexham, so he did very well but we, we already seen at Arsenal can't really do the job because the second choice yeah. goalkeeper doesn't just mean Carabao Cup a couple of games next zone we are trying to go further in the FA Cup further in the Carabao Cup and 
anything can happen. Raya can we were a bit lucky in terms of not picking up red cards the last couple of seasons. You never know. Raya can pick up a red card and miss two, three games. Then you'll need someone to come in and play um, against Aston Villa, Liverpool, and maybe a Chelsea in, in, in two weeks. You, you never know. So you need a very good goalkeeper, very confident goalkeeper. Now, which kind of goalkeeper are we looking for? So first, we'll talk about the ones we've been linked uh, linked to, and then we'll take a couple of choices um, that we've not been linked to, but that you'd like to see. So early in the in the last month or something, we were linked to um, Chesney, and I was like, nah, I'm not sure about him. <laughs> now, De Gea has been mentioned, but it depends on what goalkeeper you're looking for. So that's my first question in the terms of goalkeepers, Cozy. Second choice goalkeeper, are you looking for a younger goalkeeper, like 18-year-old, 19-year-old who's happy to be on the bench and develop under Raya? Or do you want an older goalkeeper like um, a castle who just sits on the bench at Man City and people like De Gea have already played for almost 20 years and they're happy to finish off their career or a couple of years on the bench or, you know, someone like Araya, like Ramsdale, that age, 25, 26, someone's going to come and give competition. What are you looking for? Well, I, I, I think personally what I'm looking for is the, 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 the word to underline is happy to sit on the bench, right? Mm. Because we are bringing in someone who who if, if if anyone is following who's going to work under a manager who is happy to play one player for the whole season 50 games or 60 games the whole season mm. if it's saliba or raya or what so i'm bringing we, we want to bring in someone who's happy to sit on the bench so that it is not disruptive rather than uh you know bringing harmony secondly we want to bring in a, a, a goalkeeper that has got that quality, especially short stopping. Um, we play in a very, very um, defined way and very premeditated way. I think the patterns that we see you know, for you know Arsenal implementing on the pitch have been premeditated on the training ground, right? Uh, there is not a lot of liberty. You can see what Odega does is specific. What you know, all these other players do is specific, and what Raya does is specific. And that's why Ramsdale is out of the starting eleven. So I want to bring yeah. in a goalkeeper that can give you a replica of Rams of, of Raya, and that could be due to experience, but also someone you know. I mean, imagine losing Raya, and Alexander Runasun is coming in goal, like Runasun doesn't fill me with any confidence he's one of the worst goalkeepers and one of the worst signings a premier league team has ever uh, done i'll go like, far saying he's the worst signing that we've ever made he's the worst signing we've ever made like he cannot you cannot i can't i can't see it so i think happy to sit on the bench experience and has got the quality and and probably leadership you know maybe we're going to penalties um, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of guy that can talk to the to, to the younger goalkeeper in in in, in Raya. Um, you know, maybe for example, a, a Chesney, talk to him through that uh, you know, that period and, and, and what's gonna happen and how you calm down and how you calm your nerves and something like that. I wouldn't really go for a very young goalkeeper. I don't have a very young goalkeeper in mind because I think with very young goalkeepers, they've got the advantage of being at the club for like six, seven years. If he's 18, mm -hmm. he can be at the club for seven years until he's 25 without really minding, right? Yeah. But yeah. I'm looking at the quality, right? Mm -hmm. When if you if you took if I took off Raya and I introduced the next you know under 23 goalkeeper from the academy, yeah. am I really sure? If I brought in Arthur Okwonko, am I really sure, right? If I brought in, uh, even if it's just the James Trafford, am I really sure? We've seen clubs like Leeds United having a young goalkeeper in uh, in Melier. Like, really yeah. quality goalkeeper with his feet, but you could see that there's some things that, you know, he was letting them down. So for me, young goalkeeper, I'm not really sure with the level of competition that um, we want to exert on Madrid, Bayern, and Man City and Liverpool next season on, you know, on, on, on continent, on, on um, international and... Um, you know, local, you know, stages, I would go with experience, happy to sit on the bench um, and leadership. Okay, so just yes or no, you would take Chesney? I would take Chesney. I would take Chesney. Would you, would you take De Gea? I would take David De Gea. I would take David De Gea. Both okay. of them are terrible with their feet, but I would take them. Mm. That's the thing, terrible with their feet. Now, someone who's not terrible with his feet is Justin, I think it's Bailo. I'm just going to call him Bailo. Um, he, yeah. he, was, he, he did an interview and he was asked, what are your strengths? And he did say, saving shots. I'm, I'm, I'm very good at saving one-on-one -on -one shots and ball distribution. Mm. That, is, that's, that sounds, I'm sure when Ata hears that, he's just like, 
falling deep in love like ball distribution a goalkeeper absolutely love that and he also has a bit of um s housery as you know you know uh when someone throws the ball out and you know throws it back in so that they don't take a quick throw in he has a lot of yeah. that as well which 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 is great now do you think some signing someone like a justin bylo would bring too much drama it would be the same as ram till he'd want to play 26 years of age he's still right like for goalkeepers that is now not anywhere near his prime, but right now he is expecting to play. You know, between twenty six and thirty six, is expecting to play every single day. Would you would you take him, or do you think it's going to bring too much drama again? Now, I would take him. I don't. I don't want to say that I wouldn't take him. I would take him. But mm -hmm. the, the times when uh, you know you choose your own pain, you yeah. know that he's a good goalkeeper. You know that he's uh, got the quality to compete with Ramsdale uh, with Raya, but you're actually taking away Ramsdale and you're bringing another Ramsdale. He's um, yeah. a 26-year-old goalkeeper who is going to be at the club for one year or two years and maybe Brentford are going to say, we are signing him, you know, we are signing him to, we are signing you to make, to make you number one. Or Brighton are saying, we are, we are, we are signing you to make you number one, right? Um, and then he's going to want to move on. So in terms of longevity, that is where my problem with, will be. He's not going to be there for five years. He's, we won't be there for five years, right? I don't think there's so many goalkeepers or like at that level. You look at the the the, the in in demand attributes for goalkeepers right now in Europe. Yeah, ball playing can save uh, you know shots one v one because clubs are playing a higher line. You look at Arsenal's mm -hmm. high line, Man City's high line. Um, you know so many clubs. You know Man United's high line. So many clubs are playing a high line. So you must be able to deal with 1v1 situations because you're going to find yourself in them a lot of the time. So you can do that. Well. Communication, right? And excellent ball distribution. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell me that all those attributes are just good to be second to David Dreyer. Like, this guy is like Unai Simon. You cannot have Unai Simon. And this is not international football. You cannot have Unai Simon backing up David Dreyer. Uh, you, you, mm. you really, really can't. It, it can it can happen. <laughs> so I think yeah. he can, it, for the excitement of moving to the Premier League, moving to a project like Arsenal, working under maybe a manager like Mikel Arteta, and working with players like Raya, you know, Declan Rice and Odegaard, he can actually sign um, a, a, a five-year deal. But I don't think he would live through that five-year deal. I, I don't think he's... Mm. um. He's, he's a longevity, uh, you know, guarantee. So if there is another experienced goalkeeper that would, you know, start Arsenal for, for, for more five years or more than five years, I would actually pass on the chance to sign Justin Bilo, right? Unless Arsenal are looking at it in a financial point of view. Like, he wants to move this summer. So you could, say, you, you could buy him for, let's say, 10 to 25 million, right? Yeah. Or maybe ten to twenty, and then you can move him for you know move him on for thirty. If 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 that's what they're looking at, then that's a very good decision. But if you're looking for someone just to be there to compete with Raya, he's mm -hmm. not going to be there for a long time. Yeah, he's not going to be there for a long time. I absolutely agree. Now, those are the ones we've been linked to. There's obviously a couple of others that you're not going to talk about too much. I think there's one from I think Las Palmas, maybe yeah. Ajax. There's there's so many goalkeepers we've been linked to now. Because he has a goalkeeper in mind that he's going to speak about that he would like at Arsenal. And in terms of younger goalkeepers, I would like your opinion on this. There's others like Southampton have a young goalkeeper called Baz uh, Bazonu, 22 years of age. There's someone like Meli at Leeds. I'm not sure about if he'd want to be on the bench because he's played in the Premier League before. He's captain the team, I think, a couple of times. I don't think he'd want to be on the bench. And then your option, who would, you be, would be your option as second choice goalkeeper? Uh, you know, my, my dream option... I would have two. I had. I have two dream options. Although I say they wouldn't want a, a young goalkeeper, uh, my second option would be James Trafford because mm -hmm. uh, of that English homegrown link. My first option is still English, still at Brighton. So mm -hmm. when you look at those two, the the, the one thing, the, the thing with with, with uh, the thing with um with with with. Trafford is that he's now mm -hmm. played as a number one for Burnley for quite some time. So mm -hmm. he doesn't see now himself going into, uh, you know, uh, you know, a period of five years where he's just sitting on the bench. But before that, prior to that, right, uh, still at Man City, you would actually sell the idea of him coming in and deputizing David Dreyer for three, four, five years, gaining that you know, bit of experience um, and just, you know, growing as a player 
and growing as mm. part of the squad. I think you would have, but I think that is um like one year ago. We are late. So I would yeah. go with Jason Steele. Steele is 33 years of age. He's played at Brighton. And what do we know about Brighton? They love playing out from the back. And they yeah. have, for me, Brighton have the best ball playing goalkeeper in Steele. Yeah. He is unbelievably comfortable on mm -hmm. the ball. He's so comfortable on it the ball. It scares me. And I'm not even a Brighton yeah. fan. Yeah, yeah, it, it really, really scares me. Uh, and I think there was a time when, um, uh, you know, he was just pinning balls for Karumitoma, like like lots of the time. Uh, you know, you, you play narrow and Karumitoma just, you know, stretches the pitch and you still will find him and your back mm -hmm. line is in trouble. Just just yeah. like that. But, you know, Liverpool will tell you the story. Joe Gomez and, 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 and all the players there, um, you know. So for me, it would be still. Because it's 33, goalkeepers can go up to 38. So I know yeah. you'd give him a three-year deal plus one year to extend and then plus another year to extend. That would be five years. Five years, that's half a decade of harmony. That is half a decade of having a goalkeeper that... Because with, with Arsenal, w w how many times have we seen David Raya really um, you know, making supersonic saves? I would say like yeah. 10 times in a yeah. whole season, right? Um, and and that is because we are playing with the young, you know, we are we, 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 with the young backline. These guys, these mm -hmm. boys are growing, right? Yeah. They have considered twenty nine goals this season. So I don't think uh, still comes in and is like, oh my god, I'm going to be facing nine shots a game. That is not going to happen with Arsenal. So what we want with him is, can he pull, you know, pull in the press? from the opposition and then mm -hmm. find a, a Thomas Partey, find a Bruno Gimmerich or find a Declan Rice um, in midfield or go long and find a Kai Havers, find a runner like, uh, you know, like, like Saka. He does that better than any other player, any mm -hmm. other goalkeeper, um, you know, in the Premier League. So for me, still would be number number one choice if Arsenal are willing to go for experience. He's, he's 33. He's been there. He's homegrown as well. He's English. If Arsenal want to go for someone young, I think let's try Trafford and see. It's a difficult deal, obviously. Burnley would want to see him as um, I think Burnley look at him as their next goalkeeper for a whole decade, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like mm -hmm. their James Pick, uh, you know, the, the, like their Pickford. It's just going to be there for for ten years. They have already mm -hmm. sorted the goalkeeping department, so might be a difficult deal. But because they've gone to the championship, maybe that could be an advantage for us, you know, an avenue for us to pick him up. Yeah, now I saw I see what you did with the steel steel. So my question is, you know, does he have the does steel have the mental steel to be on the bench, or would you want to steal Raya's first team position, or do you think you'd like to do? Would, you, would he be happy to be on the bench? I think steel for 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 the first year, he would come in because he's such a very quality goalkeeper, and and the attributes that Mikel Arteta wants. Um, he has more of them than Raya. He would come in in the first year and he would try to, you know, push. But because of his age, you know, I, I don't think it it really allows him to, you know, dream of a, a much bigger future. So if he's given a good place where he can kind of retire, you know, slowly but surely, um, mm -hmm. a stable income and, uh, you know, a bit of nurturing, you know, nurturing David Raya, I think he he would still you know he he would he would steal that bench position very well. Okay, so that's the goalkeeper talk, guys. Hope you enjoy that. Hope you're enjoying all the content. Make sure to hit the like button, and uh, we're going to be doing all these transfer discussions um, a lot, a lot with Cozy on both um, channels. So later today, make sure you go and check out his channel. We'll be talking about Bruno Guimaraes and the midfield situation. And obviously, the previous videos we've covered a lot already. Let us know what uh, you make about all that. Um, the, his channel is in the title, so make sure to check that. Let us know what you make of the goalkeeper situation, what you make of Gerald Hart. Is it good enough for Arsenal? And would Yokoris adapt to the Premier League, or do you think he's not the answer for 100 million? As of now, thank you for watching, and we'll catch up with you guys on the next one.